Lawyers of Reddit, since we heard about crazy clients, have you met someone you first thought completely insane who turned out to have a legit case? I'm a lawyer now, but at the time, interned for the public defender, while in law school, I had clients, and represented them under minor supervision. Nearly every client didn't do it. Any video of a client committing the offense was fake. You became cynical real quick. I had a guy claim he had an identical twin who was responsible for his DUI and not him. Claimed the guy had stolen his wallet and it, and went out getting wasted for the night, and when stopped, while weaving lanes produced it for the cop. My guy got arrested on the warrant a few weeks later, when he never appeared for court. I was skeptical, but told him okay well set it for another pretrial date, if you can get your brother to come in, and admit it maybe the prosecutor will drop it. Sure enough next court date I'm seeing double. His brother owned up to the DUI, and came in and admitted it. Case dismissed. Prosecutor never got around to filing charges on him anyways, so he had nothing to lose. Too much spam slash hate mail. Deleted the original comment. For those wondering, generic story about a patient with a history of delusions, one turned out to be true. Had a young woman in her early 20s come in a few years back that had been in a somewhat serious car accident. She was rear-ended in a pretty serious impact that totaled her car. She was complaining of extreme pain in her neck and back. So she went to a doctor to get checked out. They did an MRI, and it came back relatively clear with little to no evidence of structural damage. So the doctors they told her it was likely soft tissue damage and or muscle strain, recommended her to physical therapy and a chiropractor, Cest Larvae. So the lady continues living her life, doing part, not missing appointments, but it doesn't get better. She's in terrible pain. So they up their treatment plan to spinal injections, rhizotomy, etc. To try and alleviate it. This gives her temporary relief, but doesn't fix the issue. So after nearly a year, the doctors finally say enough is enough, and do full MRIs of her back, not just the areas she's complaining about. Turns out that the area they previously imaged, was slightly too high, and just below the prior images she now had two grossly bulging, and one rupture disc. She now needs an invasive fusion surgery to fix the issue, and has a 28% permanent disability rating due to her loss of mobility and range of motion in her back and neck. Long story short of this is, that a young 20 year old woman went around for a year telling everyone she was in extreme pain, but her doctors didn't really believe her. As her lawyer, I believed her complaints of pain, and was highly sympathetic, but objectively there was no evidence. Mano man did that change after the second round of MRIs. Case is still pending, so I can't tell you all how the story ends. But it's certainly looking like a high dollar value pie case at this point. TL. Doctor. Young woman in car accident. Doctors tell her she's fine for a year, while she's complaining of blinding pain. Turns out after a second round of imaging she actually has extreme back problems, needs an expensive and invasive surgery, and is permanently disabled. Small pie case pending for a year became an extremely valuable pie case that will likely be worth 6 to 7 figures. TL. Doctor. Client came in for drug case. Had been on death row. Was not dead or in jail. So, this won't quite answer your question. But I love this story. Had a guy come in with a drug case. Fairly standard intent to produce. He'd been caught red handed. After intake interviews we look into backgrounds. Just to see what else is on their record. Usually it's pretty much the same stuff. Drug is with drug charges and whatnot. As I'm going through this guy's history I find a murder charge. Not just that, one that he'd been convicted of. And not just that, he'd been sentenced to death. Yeah, the guy I was just talking to was on death row. Not something that happens every day. Turns out, he'd actually been framed for a murder while in prison, was convicted and was sentenced to die for it. He claimed the whole time he didn't do it, eventually found someone to take up his case, and was exonerated. I suppose that part fits the completely insane, but turned out to have a legit case part, now that I think about it. The details of just how he was framed, and subsequently freed are pretty specific, and would give identifying info, so I won't relay the framing story. Not me but a friend. He is rather odd, and complains about all kinds of things, like electromagnetic power causing his health problems. 
he was leading a group of people who were opposed to new electric power meters which wirelessly transmitted their info to the electric company people. My friend was approached to be their lawyer. The guy comes off as being crazy, but it turns out that the electric company had cranked up the power on these babies so that they were 100 times stronger than what they were in other countries and could legitimately cause all kinds of health problems in people. I think they didn't go to court, but the company decided to bring down the power on their meters on their own. One time a client was charged with resisting arrest, misdemeanor, and assaulting two police officers, separate felonies. The client completely denied all the allegations, and insisted the client was at the wrong place at the wrong time the client walked up on a fight and suddenly the police attacked the client. The police report stated the client was involved in a fight, and resisted being taken into custody. It went on to state, that the client struck one officer and kicked another. I figured the client was good for it, but I decided to dig into the client's claims, and see if I could find some grain of truth in the client's story. These events occurred in a mall. I went to the location, identified all the security cameras, and subpoenaed the videos. A few weeks later, an envelope showed up in the mail with the requested videos. Turns out the client was telling the truth, when the client claimed to just be a bystander to the fight. The video portrayed the officers pulling the client out of the crowd, throwing the client to the ground, and repeatedly tasing the client. At one point, there were four officers and two security guards beating the client up, presented the video to the grand jury, and had the felonies no build. I then showed the video to the prosecutor, and the misdemeanor was quickly dismissed. Afterwards, I handed the client's file over to a civil attorney to sue the city, police department, mall, and the officers. This was one girl in my sister's class when she was in high school who kept complaining that the teacher wasn't doing his job properly, how he was being lazy, and trying to play the guessing game about what the exam board would be putting on their learning for life and work A-level exams. Everyone accused her of being paranoid, since he was well known for helping his students get high grades. It turns out she was precisely right. The teacher was guesstimating what would be on the exams, by comparing trends in previous exams and their questions which is also what the students were being given to practice on. Turns out that the paranoid girl was literally the only one who went online and downloaded the past exams in full to practice herself with, while the teacher took questions from one exam, photocopied them and made his own mock exams. The exam board caught on that this was rather common, and threw in a whammy on that year's exam. And the thing is, no one else caught on because as a cost-cutting manner he didn't order a bunch of textbooks and instead photocopied pages from the textbook and handed them out, having students glue them into their notebooks. The paranoid girl was literally the only student in her year who ended up with a grade above a D. Another odd example is how my sister claimed the lollipop lady hated her for some odd reason. We never did find out. And we just thought it was something she was imagining, up until she was 11, in primary 7, the last year, before entering secondary school. So, bit of backstory on this one. Shortly before this was proven my sister broke her arm playing in a sports team, and had to be put in a cast. It was about 2 weeks after this had happened. So my sister is walking to school as normal, and she gets to the crossing with the lollipop lady. Lady apparently went off on some tangent and struck my sister with the sign, and knocked her over so hard she broke the cast. Luckily this was just outside a pharmacy which was opening. The shop assistant came out, when she heard her crying, saw the broken cast, and brought my sister inside, raising hell for the lollipop lady. Mum's a frequent customer due to a number of prescriptions she has, so the assistant both knows our house number, and knows where mum works, so she goes up there asap, after leaving my sister in the care of the pharmacist. Mum calls an aunt, since she didn't drive at the time and takes my sister to the nearest hospital, to get her arm x-rayed again, and to get a new cast on. Pharmacist's assistant knows the school my sister goes to, only reason she would be going to that lollipop lady, tells the principal what happened. Lollipop lady is fired the same day. Oddly enough I was beginning to suspect something about this the last few years I went to that school. There's a primary and secondary school, so I still saw that woman on occasion when I was heading to the secondary, even though we start half an hour later than the primary school. On one occasion I had to stop by this shop which needed me to cross the road, but not at the point where I'd meet her, or else I'd be late. I go in, 
buy what I need and head down to where I cross the road on my normal route, where I cross with the lollipop lady. She grabs me by the arm, gets into my face, sneers that I'm an idiot for crossing somewhere else. I pushed her away, ran to the school, and tried to avoid crossing at that spot, or walking past her as much as possible, until she told my mother that she hasn't seen me in a while, and got me yelled at. <laughs> Had a client, startup, that claimed their general counsel had engaged in a conspiracy with their main competitor, that he'd forged fakes of their old corporate documents like board meeting minutes and their stock ledger, coordinated with the competitor, to stage a takeover of the board at a shareholder meeting, and worked from the inside to undermine the client's contracts with customers to steer them to the rival. They also claimed the general counsel was having an affair with his secretary, and that they'd been embezzling tens of thousands of dollars through forged payroll checks. It all seemed like insane paranoid nonsense and none of us really believed them. But it all turned out to be true. There's one particularly disturbing client who can't hold a conversation without threatening suicide. He likes contacting random people in the office by email, sending them photos of his most recent detailed plans. Sometimes it's a picture of a noose, sometimes a selfie of him about to jump into traffic, or in front of a train, sometimes a photo of one of his wrists with a dotted line, marked I'm cutting it here written on it. One particularly memorable email was just totally blank except for a photo of a coffin he's bought for himself, and a second photo with him lying in it with his eyes closed. He also likes copying random politicians into the emails too. We don't know why. We've tried reporting him to the mental health authorities, the police and social services, but sadly this poor sod will never get the help he needs. Then again, he's definitely entitled to a passport extension. Totally legitimate, but really really straightforward, case. That said, if he got round to sending them his old passport, like we've told him instead of lots of photos of nooses, coffins, and knives, he'd have it sorted out by now. I got one gonna have to be as broad as possible. Woman claimed her child was stolen by essentially a witch doctor. The child was with a woman who, by all accounts, had been pregnant and now had a child. Yeah, the woman had faked being pregnant and gotten the witch doctor to steal the baby. Whole thing was in Africa, nothing was well documented. The story was so completely bonkers and the woman who actually stole the baby was western and college educated and the girl who had her baby stolen was not. It didn't take too long to figure it all out, but holy smokes. People might be interested in the case of Daniel Rigmaiden, who was wanted and eventually arrested for tax fraud. He claimed the cops gathered information from him by sending rays into his living room via Stingray. Stingrays are a type of surveillance technology that can intercept cell phones, and before this case most of the public didn't know they existed. Rigmaiden wound up representing himself because no lawyer believed him and he wound up being right. Read more here.